All right, go ahead so and stand here, and, I, and I'll be a voter coming out of the polling place, okay? Students of the Indian Legal Clinic at ASU's law school are busy holding simulations for scenarios they're expecting Native voters to encounter ahead of this year's election. The purpose of Native Vote Arizona Native Vote Election Protection is to help folks vote who are voting at the polls with ID problems, uh, voter registration problems, a whole list of problems that we're going to talk about. Unfortunately, some issues have already surfaced. People from Arizona and across the nation might be surprised by the innumerable hurdles to obtaining a state-issued ID. Patty Ferguson Bonney, director of the Indian Legal Clinic, was one of a dozen individuals who helped Agnes Laughter, a Navajo Nation elder, in her quest to obtain a state-issued ID. She had tried several times to obtain an ID on her own unsuccessfully. And she was concerned because she had been voting since Natives were allowed to vote in Arizona, which was around the 1970s. Uh, when they abolished the English literacy requirements for voting. And so she was very pr a very proud voter. She believed in voting. Um, and she wanted to uh, make sure she was able to vote in the elections. She was very discouraged by the voter ID law. She felt embarrassed. We assisted her in obtaining an ID through the Indian Legal Clinic. And it was um, very revealing as to how difficult it was for her to obtain an ID. She lives in Chilchimbato, uh, which is on the eastern part of the Arizona portion of the Navajo Reservation. And someone from Window Rock went to pick her up. Then they had to drive her all the way to um, Tuba City. So we went to the Vital Statistics Office first and obtained her affidavit of birth. Uh, from the nation and then we walked over it was right next to the Navajo Nation office to the office of motor vehicles and when we went to the office of motor vehicles they actually didn't issue same day um, identification cards they can't issue a card with a picture on it from the DMV right there in Tuba City so we left from there and we went to Flagstaff we were with her and she went up to the individual who was working um, at the DMV to obtain her identification card and she was told that no, that her affidavit of um, birth from the Navajo Nation was not sufficient. And uh, since I was with her, you know, I was able to advocate that yes, this actually does meet the requirements and they issued her a state ID. But I just think that's um, ridiculous, like a ridiculous example of what um, individuals have to go to to obtain an ID, especially these elderly individuals who speak their native language. I think it took us about five hours to drive up to Tuba City and then back to um, Flagstaff, you know, another couple of hours, then, you know, the DMV and then driving back. So. We probably spent 11, 12 hours, so it impedes that right to vote. Come election day, voter ID laws and other forms of voter suppression in Arizona may disenfranchise further numbers of Native citizens. Stay tuned for more coverage from our community journalists in key states. For Voting Rights Watch 2012, a joint project of the nation and colorlines.com, I'm Hilary Abe.